Like, and because people are asking for the context of music. Should I try to get on Rumble as early as a platform? So here are the rules. One, when a platform is early and you're early in your career, you can't just assume, oh, I'm going to grow with the platform. I'm going to be early and I'm going to make it to the top of the platform. And then as other people come on, I'm going to be at the top of the game and everybody's going to show me love. And that's how I'm going to grow and blow up. It sounds good. And a lot of people look at that first mover uh, advantage as a justification to hop on these platforms. But there's a few things to consider. One, doesn't even make sense for you to be on that platform in the context of what people are there to consume. When I'm looking at Rumble right now, just going through the pages, a lot of it is based on like news, commentary, like talking head type stuff, which is cool, but that's not music. So people aren't there in the mindset of I'm going to consume music yet. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you can somehow work your way in to commentary with music. Yeah. Was, yeah. Eh. You have to be like a special type of artist. Yeah. You got to be a special a, type of yeah. artist, right? You, yeah. you might be conscious in the way that this platform, their consumers think of conscious, right? Yeah. Talking on all those issues in that way. Maybe you do that. Or maybe you just look at it like, I'm going to plug my music in between those shows. I'm going to hit up all the people on this platform and see if I can get my music to to be a part of their intro or backtrack or whatever. Something like that. So do you belong on this platform? What do people consume on this platform? If they're not there for you or some version of you, eh, that's pretty tough, right? Another thing to consider, will this platform even be around long? That's a, that's a huge thing to think about. Yeah, I, right? I, yeah, I think it is. I ain't gonna lie. Rumble, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Right? But Oh, just platforms in general. I'm just talking yeah, in okay, general, gotcha, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Because people ask this every time there's a new yeah. platform that pops. Yeah. Right? They did that with uh, Triller, right? I, I, about Triller. I knew Triller wasn't gonna be around. I was trying to tell people, but and we can kind of go into even some of the house because it relates to this conversation. But is the platform going to be around long? Well, it's hard to make that analysis if you don't know what to look for. All right. Now, people kind of felt that way about TikTok. And some people felt that way about um, Triller. They're like, oh, well, TikTok's not going to be that around that long. I don't know about this new thing. Triller's going to be around. Look at all these investments that keep happening. Look at all these brand deals that keep happening and da da da. And all yeah. these artists keep posting on it. So the industry. Like is like, oh man, Kendrick Lamar is involved and all these other artists and these artists that get paid to post on there. They keep seeing these faces thinking that that actually means something. That doesn't mean something. I know that there's this, this idea of clout and what clout can do. Mm. But when it comes to technology and even brands, but especially technology, clout does not have the level of equity that you would think it does. In terms of something popping and lasting, you might get a little bit of initial um, attention, but change behavior, nah, it's, it's not as real as you would think it would or as we would love it to be, right? So don't just think you can get a bunch of influencers and then blow a brand up. It's not how it works. Um, and I don't even mean like random influencers. I'm talking about like Kevin Hart, fucking, yeah. you know, The Rock, Uzi. whatever, Uzi, yeah. whoever, right? It can happen. It can 100% happen, but there's more to it. You have to look at the actual platform. Not just the influencers, because the influencers, if right in the right audience and da da da, it can make the initial attention happen. But translating that into something lasting is different. So, if you look at Triller, technologically, they were behind TikTok on just the user experience, mm -hmm. right? Me consuming the things that are going to make me stay on the platform and keep me interested on the platform, they are behind. Also. The growth of TikTok happened so fast. They were so aggressive to get to so many users. You have the network effect. Once you get past a certain threshold of users, one, it has greater utility, meaning it's more useful, right? If there's only one person with a cell phone, it ain't that <laughs> meaningful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You got a thousand people with a cell phone. Okay. You got a hundred thousand people with a cell phone. Now you're like literally changing behavior and the way the world can interact. TikTok took off. They got to that way faster than Triller. Triller actually never fully um, got to that and what you needed in today's 
um, world because you also have to consider it's not just, oh, I got 20 million users. That would have been great back in the day, but now you got 20 million users when Facebook already has a billion yeah. type thing. So, you know, you're talking about transitioning people from other platforms or telling them to make more time. So that becomes less um, like if, if, if a platform can hit that number, that threshold, and it's, it varies depending on what you're looking at. But if a platform can hit the network effects, then not only is it more useful, meaning people will probably stay on, that means legitimate culture can start being established. And when culture is being established and you have certain behaviors that pertain specifically to that platform, we talked about it the other day. Mm -hmm. YouTube shorts, great. It's probably gonna do well because people are already had are already on YouTube. So you just have to, you know, change your behavior a little bit. If you can get it to move, it can move. But that culture is not going to evolve into what TikTok's culture is gonna mm -hmm. be. Yep. So when people want the TikTok culture, they're gonna go to TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, you can open a new club in town, all right? But I'm gonna go to you when I want the EDM vibe, and I, you're not gonna kill this. Like I don't know, street underground vibe. Yeah, like it's it's just a two it's two different energies. So I go to you for different things, right? Hang out with different friends for different interests. That's all it is. Like these platforms are literally people's friends. That's kind of how mm -hmm. you might as well yeah. think of it. Yeah. All right. And then also, when you look at the network effect in terms of the amount of people, you want to look at SoundCloud as well. Where I knew SoundCloud wasn't going to just disappear. You remember when that happened? If you were yeah. like SoundCloud gonna die completely, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, that's been a minute. This, uh, that well, almost, well, like 2018 or something. I can't, like honestly, years? I can't believe I actually just randomly remembered that. Like I pulled it out. Of the, no, I, I hate trying to beat. I ain't thought about that. Like, the same thing with Snapchat. Time. It was the same like, thing with Snapchat. Snapchat too. Yeah. It was right. Yeah. So that's perfect. The reason those have still stood the test of time is because you got to so many people, and when you have that many people on a platform. These companies ain't about to just let that many users die, right? Yeah. Like that's a lot of data. But even MySpace was still My sp around, <laughs> bro. Like, even, even MySpace, MySpace was still, still kicking, around. bro. Yeah. So it's still useful yeah. to from an investor and business side. It's hard to just let that go. Yeah. It's very likely that you're gonna find some more money. You yeah. know, like, oh, they say money is a problem. They'll probably find some more money. The founder might not like how much comes with that money. Right, the the terms of that money, but there's gonna be some more money to be found. Yeah, or they're just gonna sell the data. Or they just gonna they sell the data. They always got the data to flip, bro. They always they, got it. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> and that's a part of all of them at this point. So, if it but if it doesn't have these things at the moment, then how can you make that make be sure that it's gonna um, stay on? Then you have to start looking at the likelihood that a platform will be around based off of. Maybe the need in the marketplace, like opportunities in the marketplace. And I say all these things because like artists are truly making their career decisions off of this. And you're gonna dedicate a whole year to a platform and then ain't shit ever happen. Like people did that with uh what was the other one? I thought she was about to say triller again, yeah, but um Triller, no, I, I, was, I was gonna say the other triller, but then I said, then I was like, no, nah, it was like triller. I think I know. It was like a start with like a V or something. Dove smash or something. Oh shit! I forgot about yes. Dove smash. Dove smash. But that just unlocked a part of my brain that just been dormant. That shit was crazy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It happened. It'd be blips of time, yeah. and people would be so excited about like this a fun stuff. summer. <laughs> <laughs> a fun summer, not a one night stand, but it was a fun <laughs> summer. It was fun summer. Which, real quick digression. Did you know know that DC Young Fly blew up on Vine? Yeah, yeah, I was there, bro. I watched that shit. I didn't up. realize it was yeah. Vine where he blew up. Yeah. I probably I was seeing the videos when he blew up, but I didn't realize I was watching it on Vine. It was like one of the things you just yeah kind of start to see him everywhere. Now you don't remember where you discovered. It. I didn't yeah. know it was Vine. But it was a lot of them like him, Caleb. I don't even know Caleb City. Yeah, Caleb City. Up yeah. on there, and then it was one more big one. Oh, King Batch, yeah, all them. All them I King, knew King Batch yeah. was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him, I remember his uh, his girl. That blew up on Vine too. But yeah, so let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in 
Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Those, um, like all that stuff you want to really think through before you like just put your career out there on the platform. Like you might dip your toe on it, but it's better for a newer artist to just learn the platforms that are sure and then take some chances on new platforms. Unless you literally have nothing going on on the current platform yeah. that you're on. Yeah. So now it's like, hey, let me just risk it all for a moment. Try this for three, four months. And then what factors are worth taking that risk? Well, when you see something like what TikTok was doing, the discoverability and people going viral so fast, now it's like, oh, this is a new platform, but hey, it's getting people found. Like yeah. for real, for real. Not this, oh, if I dedicate myself to it for long enough and I'm going to slowly become big and then all of a sudden... um, all of, all of a sudden, you know, as the platform gets bigger, where I'm going to get bigger. It's like, no, this moment is happening now. TikTok is a king maker, queen maker, or at least like viral moment maker now. I got to take advantage of this now. And that's what happened early on with TikTok. So you had people dedicating and it was worth that time, especially the amount of time that you had to invest to get that viral moment was such a contraction versus how much it took on other platforms. Yeah. It was worth it to at least see. Right. So if you have any signs of discoverability on a platform like that, then it's worth going to take that risk. But not just, oh, this is a platform that's building up and you know, people are doing well, they like it. Not not all that. Not you like you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about your career. You yeah. don't care about these fucking platforms. These platforms are only a vehicle for you to get yourself out there and communicate your message and then bring home some money through the platform, you know, and send out that attention. Let the content be a little army that collects people, <laughs> throws them in the bag, yeah. brings them to your cash register, cashes out, <laughs> yeah. you know, goes into your your listening farm, listens to your music, and then puts some back into the universe, right? That's how that's what you're there for. Platforms are only your way of doing it. So don't get too married to any of the platforms. And when you make decisions for platforms, use some of the principles that we just went through. Yeah, I feel like ours got a kind of a plot of, what is it, the, uh, the Pareto's principle? The, the 80 20. The 80 20, right? Yeah. That's, I look at it because like, you, you already kind of touched on it, but there are certain platforms that in today moving forward, but we know are not, more than likely not going anywhere, right? Like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Instagram. I would throw TikTok in there now. Like these are platforms where like it would take a lot for them to die off. Oh, okay. You mean going like not dying out? Yeah, not okay. dying off. Yeah, okay, not yeah. like not going. Yeah, yeah. So not dying <laughs> oh, off, right? So damn. like, so like, these become like the safe bets, right? Hey, I may not be able to grow as fast on here as maybe this new thing, but rest assured, if I put the work in, like something will come from it, right? Because the foundation has already been laid. So I, I, because I do think there's that that delicate balance, but especially in music, between right, like. How do you make sure you don't miss out on the next thing? Because we know music changes every time a damn near new app drops. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and then all it takes is the right app to completely change the culture and shift it, right? We, we saw that with TikTok. TikTok's probably the most recent, I would say, to show us that, right? So I think everything you said is, is like, is, is true in that. And I know, like, even outside of that, one of the biggest things, or two of the biggest things I look at before, like, fully investing in a, in a new platform is one, are there people I know in real life talking about it? Mm. Right? Because yep. like you said, like it'll, and a Kevin Hart post ain't going to get me over there, bro. I know Kevin Hart got a bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not yes. stupid, right? But if I, I see like, oh, my my little sister and like her friends are on it, right? And I'm like, oh, shit, that's the app I just heard about. Like, then they're using mm -hmm. it, bro. Like, you know, my roommates bring it up or something. Like, it, it makes it more real for me. Right? I can I can see the people that are on it and then based on that decide if I need to be there, right? If my grandma told me about a new app, mm, 
You know what I'm saying? But like my my <laughs> wait, why not your grandma? That's a real person. My grandma ain't my target demographic. She's not your all right. That's a, not your <laughs> target demographic, but it can be yeah. a symbol of how big and real the conversation. Okay, that's fair. That's like fair. she's talking about you, like dang, how did she hear about that? Yeah, that's right? fair. That's fair. You know, it's still yeah. like a it's a pretty strong indicator that there's something to brew. I'll say yeah. that it's something. It might not be the decision maker. You know, it's something to brew. <laughs> 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 I think my grandma actually does watch. watch what? The show. Yeah. God. She watched a couple man. of our videos. So. See, I thought about this the other day, man. I said, I got to stop <laughs> cursing so much in these videos. No, my grandma knows what's up, bro. <sighs> yeah. she know, you know, grandma. You know what's up. Hey, bro. You know, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear this now, grandma, you know what's up. <laughs> hey, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, like. <laughs> Got got a little bit of that old Southern with me where it's like, all right, yeah, you can know I curse, but I'm probably not cursing a whole bunch around you. No, bro, it's, I need just, them. it's just I need not them as know. comfortable. They know, bro. They that you need to know? Yeah, I need that. Oh, you lean into the curse. Yeah, 100%, bro. 100%, <laughs> bro. I mean, I ain't not in a disrespect, but it was like, hey, grandma, this ain't directed at you, but I need you to know this is the type of lifestyle your grandson be living <laughs> when he's not home for Thanksgiving dinner. You know what I'm saying? I don't want a lot of my grandma. You know what I'm saying? I like her. I love her too much for that, you know? See, <laughs> my my grandma can get with that, but she can't. My mom can't. That's that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. my mom like nah. She she ain't, she ain't having none of that, bro. Like uh, you the devil. <laughs> that's that, that's damn near what it's gonna be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh shit! And I, to the second point too, because you just touched on it a little bit. The second thing I look at before the sign for platform is worth investing in. Is how many conversations get created around that platform, right? Like, how much is it being talked about? Because mm-hmm. to go back to the, your point about TikTok and Triller, one of the biggest things I think that TikTok had over Triller was they were a conversation starter. You mm-hmm. go back to 2018, 2019, that was, you know, first it was like Lil Nas X and then Arizona Zervis. We started the whole conversation of, oh shit, is TikTok gonna be this new thing for the music, right? That's a whole, that's a conversation being started, right? And then we go into, is this safe for kids? That was that whole debate, right? And just mm. the content being pushed on there. And then there was the China, you know, some of the, the, the not China thing, but Trump trying to ban it, right? It was like all yep. these different conversations popping up around the app that let you know, like, hey, this is this is way more relevant outside of just the app store and even the people that are using it. Yep. And if we know anything about people, is that eventually curiosity kicks in. And if you keep hearing about something, whether good or bad eventually a part of you wants to go check it out, which means that, which is basically the funnel, right? And then we know eventually those people are going to convert. And then it goes back to all the things you said, like, is the user experience cool? Do we feel like it replaces something that we, you know, or not replace, but does it fill a gap that we don't already have, right? But mm-hmm. that these things drive people to the point to even get to make that decision. And like, Triller didn't have any of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, that, maybe outside of like, the only real conversation I remember around Triller at that time was, when someone was saying they were like botting traffic on the platform, right? And that became like a whole thing, which is a terrible conversation to start off with <laughs> <laughs> as a new yeah. as a newer platform, right? Yeah. It's a terrible conversation. But TikTok had like so many like polarizing narratives hitting at the same time. I remember like Twitter was the same way when it first came out. Facebook was the same way when it first came out. YouTube was like that when it came out. Like they it, it started all these like real world conversations, and you could see it like pushing certain buttons in real life. That just like I said, anybody that understands, I think people, you know that eventually, bro, people are gonna stick with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. polarizing conversation creates people that really stand for it and people that hate it. And that to me is one of the things that makes a, a good platform kind of stick is that polarity of it. Like you need people that to shit on it. You just don't want an overwhelming amount of people shitting on it. You, you know what I'm saying? Just enough just enough that right. it's spicy, you know what I'm saying? But not enough that that shit runs everybody away from it. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So I look at those as like all the things you said. Is there somebody in real life I know using it and then do those people represent the demographic I'm looking for? Or like you said, or do they even represent that this thing is ascended to beyond just the niche that it's even targeting? And then, bro, like what is being talked, is that platform even being talked about? Not just in terms of like mm-hmm. users and usability, but like what are the actual conversations being started because this app is in the marketplace? Because people only make conversations around things they think are important or can make an impact. If it's neither of those things, then we don't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? At least not, not general consumers, but like, you know, like news outlets and kind of like the public at whole. So that that's always like led me in the right direction. The only time it failed me, there was this app in college called Yik Yak that was pretty crazy. I thought it was going to blow up. I don't know if oh, you remember yeah, Yik Yak. Yeah, Yik Yak, yeah. I thought Yik Yak was going to be crazy. That shit those died guys, on. It was something that I was- They like sold it or something. I had in relation to it. Either I knew- 
the founders were in one of my programs. It was something like something close to the cuff where I was around it a lot, an accelerator or something I used to go to or something. I don't know. They had all these companies and that was a dope app concept. <laughs> the thing that pushed them over the edge, though, I believe was it was all the bullying and stuff that mm -hmm. was occurring. Mm -hmm. And they, they got hit with that kind of issue too early. Yeah, exactly. Ne too negative of a conversation too, too early. Negative. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, one thing that you said that I want to kind of like codify for people, because you were kind of touching on it, where you talked about your grandma or like little sister talking about something. It's about not just people in your real life, but people that are out of your bubble in music, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a very important Specifically. distinction. Yeah. Because yeah. Triller seemed really big to people who yeah. are in music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you hear a lot of people talking about it, but it wasn't touching the real life, the regular people. The same way when I would talk about like industry plans, I'm like, go ask your regular like person, like your sister, your brother, mm -hmm. or like, who that's not in music, what an industry plan is. And most people have never heard of mm -hmm. something like that, right? Like that's how you can really gauge the relevance of a lot of these things. Cause you want to, I don't want to say real people because, you know, being in the music industry, you are a real person, but you lose some of your real personhood in terms of market accuracy in terms of how you judge shit. Yeah. Right. Like you yeah. can't gauge another music person's like something's quality off of another music person because they just they're as much in the sauce as you are. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's that. And then the last thing is the company's decision making process. If you look at their moves, now you have to have a little bit more of a complex understanding of business probably to truly get it. But when Triller did the boxing match, I said, oh, shit, this is horrible. It's over for Triller. All right. And that was a big moment to people when they sponsored a bo boxing match. But just coming from tech, I'm like, this makes no sense for them to do. Like, this is a, a reach, hmm. right? This is like, I'm dying and we trying to find some, 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 some oxygen. When they purchased Versus, I said, oh shit, Tr Tw uh, Triller is still fucked, <laughs> all right? Because what it looked like was, we don't know who we are anymore. Hmm. Like, we're, lo we're losing this TikTok battle for just the pure tech and what that looks like. So we're trying to figure out another form of monetization to make this business viable and attractive, at least on the back end, how investors might be looking at it, things like that, right? So, you know, like I said, it might be a little bit more difficult to just call that out with businesses. But in contrast, I see TikTok create an ad platform right where you can create run ads for yourself as a regular consumer or uh, or a personal user just like you can do on Facebook oh that's investing in the right direction i saw them make moves where the creator funds you see them mm -hmm. do things like um they had this platform where you could try to search their their influencers on oh, the platform yeah, yeah, right yeah. The, the the creator marketplace or whatever yeah. it was called right and i think that's still around it was poorly done and i didn't think that was gonna last because i had seen so many people try to do it and it just it's a hard hard thing to figure out um but at least their thinking is somewhere in the sphere of what they were already selling right what is another move that that tiktok did so, so even them just highlighting trends on the platform like tiktok showed that, hey, we are a platform that pay attention to our creators and we're yes. willing to give them the spotlight. Yes. Yeah. Everything was investing back in that core mm -hmm. where Triller was just like... Cold music industry tool. Yeah, it was a, it was a music <laughs> industry tool and they were yeah. making music industry moves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. But yeah, it doesn't do what you need it to do. I'll go ahead and switch subjects. 